<laughs> so we're on chapter three, uh, called uh, the Columbo Tactics. This is part one, the game plan of uh, Greg Kokel's uh, tactics. So if you're following along in the book, uh, we are using the 10th anniversary edition. Um, and so yours might uh, just be uh, different a, a, a little bit. Um, and so he provides uh, four scenes here, and, and we picked two of them because we thought uh, that they were good introductions, and, and his answers were also good uh, for these. Uh, so imagine, if you will, you're in the Twilight Zone, and you're at a dinner party, as, as we all are. Uh, or, you know, you're, you're just out someplace, and you, you're with some your close friends from church. Suddenly, to your surprise and embarrassment, your host's 15-year-old son announces with some belligerence that he doesn't believe in God anymore. Oh, oh. It is simply not rational. He says there's no proof. You have no idea. He's been moving in this direction. There's a stunned silence. What do you say? Mm. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna eat the potato salad yeah, and that's right. probably look 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 yeah, down and yeah, right. try to avoid yes. eye contact. Yeah. It's like the, <laughs> same thing when the pastor calls on you to ask a question. <laughs> the second scene is you're riding the university shuttle with a friend who notices a Bible in your backpack. I've read the Bible before. He says it's got some interesting stories, but people take it too seriously. <laughs> oh man, I'm one of those people that take it too seriously. I guess it was only written by men, after all. And men make mistakes. What do you have to say about that? Wow. Yeah. Okay, let's look at a few things <clears throat> about these uh, sometimes awkward and out of the blue situations. Some something you can't hold to, but it's it's kind of what you've been waiting for. An open invitation, yeah, if you yeah, will, right. to present the gospel, right? <laughs> That's what we want to do here. Uh, well, Greg uh, Kokel says that, uh, that there's a tactic to be involved here. So in each of these cases, you have an opportunity but there still, there's still are obstacles. You know, leap out from the dinner table and <laughs> tell them, you know, I rebuke you in the name of the yeah. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or you're on the bus and you just throw the Bible at them. That's and right. said, if That's you read right. this, you would believe it. If you're a sheep and not a goat, you would, you would hear his voice. Well, first of all, you must speak up quickly, right? Because uh, uh, opportunity will not last long. Uh, you're at a dinner party and someone might want to change the subject for the sake of, you know, social norms. You're yeah. on the bus. That bus is going to end. You have about 10 seconds before the door closes. What do you do? Yeah. So, what do you so do? that's kind of an interesting, uh, you know, um, uh, idea here. He's suggesting you only have about 10 seconds. Yeah. And OK, why? Well, because, you know, that's just. Social interaction right. works that way, right? right? Yeah. In other words, you know, you, it, it's kind of awkward if you get longer than that and then you try to come back with that. It's as if you're forcing the issue, right? right? And so he wants it to be natural, right? And so you have about 10 seconds to kind of uh, work through right. whatever you're going to do. You, you want right? to utilize the opportunity brought up immediately. You don't want to say, well, that's a really good discussion. Let's have a four-hour coffee, yeah. at, you know, yeah. the two weeks from now, if my schedule holds true for the next or 16 Or 10 minutes hours. later, you say, oh, well, wait, wait, I want to say this right. about that. Right. Well, okay, we've moved on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, are we still talking about that? <laughs> Pass the peas, please. <laughs> Second, you're conflicted. You want to say something, but you're also concerned about being sensitive, keeping the peas preserving the friendship and not looking extreme mm. so mm. those those are the uh the the issues that we have to deal with it, at least with these two um uh, situations but i think that kind of encompasses a, a, like you said a, a lot of our interactions you're, yeah you're at yeah. you're at work you're uh you know you you make mention about how you were at church and someone walks by and just says oh i lost my faith a long time ago yeah. <laughs> okay I, yeah. I, you know do, wow. do i have do i have a a, a, a rejoiner to that <laughs> statement <laughs> that, that 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 bomb that's been dropped in my lap yeah. so that's uh that's those are kind of the uh the situations that uh, uh greg coco br brings up for us to discuss yeah yeah good so coco then now he's going to give us a way to deal with these in the and, and give us you know in that within that 10 seconds time at least to get the get the ball rolling right, right? Uh, so he asks us you know what if there's an easy uh, escape from the challenge that each of these situations present uh, you know a way to minimize the awkwardness and engage the other person productively and graciously what if what if wow you know okay doesn't sound like any conversation <laughs> I'm a part of then he says <laughs> what if you had a plan right uh, in place that would guide you uh, uh, with regard to the next move that you should make. Well, I, I okay, I'm, I'm up for that. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm peaked. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And so let's look at uh, he, what he does now in the book is uh, he answers these particular challenges, mm -hmm. right? And he, so he gives us some idea of what he would say. And then what he's going to do is kind of analyze this to help us to understand where he's coming right. from and why he said right. what he said, right? Yeah. So, so the first one, you know, the... Um, and this is the dinner party, right? And this 15-year-old kid, my goodness, right? Yeah. Blurts this stuff out in the <laughs> middle of, you know, can you imagine how embarrassing that is to the folks yeah. who are Not living? the time and place. Yeah. So. Johnny, go sit down. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, notice, he says, Perhaps we would do something like this. He says, it, you know, it's not rational to believe in God, right? There's no proof. That's, That's what the, the kid claim. said, yeah, right? Sure. And so what do you mean by God? That is, what kind of God do you reject, right. we might ask, right? What specifically is irrational about believing in God? Since you're concerned about proof of God's existence, what kind of evidence would you find acceptable? Right? Mm -hmm. so, so he's suggesting something like that might be a response that he would give, right? right? Uh, the second one, here's your friend and you on the, you know, sitting and uh, traveling together, and he notices your Bible. He, he, uh, he says, uh, you can't take the Bible too seriously because it was only written by men, and men make mistakes. Okay, and okay. Coco suggests something like this. Do you have any books in your, in your library? Were these books written by humans? Uh, do you find any truth in them? <laughs> is there a reason you think the Bible is less truthful or reliable than other books you, you own? Do people always make mistakes, um, you know, when they write things? Do you think that if God did exist, he would be a, a capable of using humans to write down exactly what he wants? Why not? Or why? Right. right? Yeah. That, that that last one, I've, I've used that one uh, qu quite a bit with, yeah. with uh, uh, you know, it's just written by humans and goat herders and whatever else uh, a rejoiner that uh, that uh, is brought up with, with that one. Yeah. So Coco is suggesting that's kind of the approach that he would start with in this 10 second window. Right. Right. Notice. He, so, he, so, you know, he's uh, it's interesting how he how he does that. And and. Um, um, you know, with these responses, mm -hmm. I think. Okay, and I think we'll see a pattern here, right? Right. <clears throat> uh, so the, the the things that you see about these uh, responses is, first of all, he's asking questions. Questions. He has lots of questions. Yeah. Right? He, he's taking the statements. He's breaking them down, and he's making a question of each parts of those. Right. So so he's suggesting here by asking a question, this is not the opportunity to start preaching to somebody. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, yeah. you ask questions. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Um, you know, th these are statements being made to you and, and you're trying to get to the heart of, of, of what's being asked here. Good. So each of each uh, second of all, each of these questions is an invitation to thoughtful dialogue. Two parts of that thoughtful and dialogue. Yeah, right. Yeah. So this isn't again, you're a, a Standing in a pulpit and you're you're th throwing words at the person, yeah. or you're trying to shut them down, you yeah. know, and make them look That's you know, stupid. And yeah, why yeah. would you ever believe something <laughs> yeah. like that? Yeah, no, do, no, do no. You have no morality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we want dialogue with the person. Right. We want them talking so that we can you know kind of uh, you know uh, go further with this situation. Right. right, right, yeah. And third, these are not idle queries. They're uh, there is a particular purpose for each question, and that's mm. that's uh, absolutely true. Uh, you know, the 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 teenager at the at the dinner table. I mean, th there's a lot of uh, implications in there. He he might want to be doing it for you know whatever embarrassing reason or <laughs> rebellious reason. I can't I can't believe a 15 year old would be rebellious <laughs> in that type of situation. Uh, but you know, uh, he, he there's a lot of questions to unpack there. Uh, you know. Who's the God you're talking about? Why? Yeah, you know, the, yeah. the, um, all his questions are, are making um, uh, thought-provoking conversation returners uh, to, to those. It, mm. It's it's they're not uh, accusatory. They're not uh, um, you know they're not uh, they're not rude. They, that they, they're not uh, pithy little sayings to right, to, right. to shut shut it down. You know yeah, the, yeah. the 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 words of the president from the the 1900s always have that you know pithy saying that that uh, you know <laughs> shuts the other person up and you know uh, if, if I was your husband I would drink it type type deal of, of Churchill and so th those are the three things that we can we can notice here first of all their question each question presents thoughtful dialogue a conversation between you and that person is exactly what you want mm -hmm. it's how you not get the other person angry and you're trying to figure out where they're coming from. The, the, there's a purpose for each of those questions. You're yeah. not just asking for the sake of asking questions. Yeah, good. 